Hey everybody, what's going on? I'm Andy, I'm a self-taught programmer, and in this video, I'm gonna answer the question, can you really get a software developer job without a computer science degree? Is it possible for you to forego the traditional route, go to school for four years, get that piece of paper that says, you know what you're doing, and to actually land a job in this field? And I know a lot of you guys out there who follow my channel are going this approach. You're foregoing even boot camps or school. You're just doing it all on your own. And is it really possible? Is it truly something that you can do? And so we're gonna really visit this. I'm gonna go deep on it and talk about why I think you can become a software developer. Still, yes, it's almost 2020 now and why I think it's still possible. So if you're new here, if you're new to this channel, you're wondering who the heck I am, I'm Andy Sterkwitz. I'm a self-taught software developer. I'm also a mentor and a coach to everyday people who are aspiring software developers. So people who are looking to get in the field, I help them with strategies for learning. I also help them with the job hunting aspect, really figuring out how to actually get into that first position. So if you're into that content, I highly recommend hitting the subscribe button below. Also make sure to hit that little bell icon as well so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. So can you become a software developer without a computer science degree? So let me just break down some of the reasons why I think it's still possible in 2020 and give you my basic idea here, my, my argument. So the first thing that I'd say is, you know, I try my best in life to reason from first principles. And I've always liked this concept ever since I learned about it. Uh, the, the blog that I was actually introduced to was the Wait But Why blog, a really, really, really good blog. I highly recommend it. I'll actually link in the description below. Um, and in his uh, post, and I, I had, it's been a while since I've read it. I'm just going off of memory here. But he talks about reasoning from first principles. And he specifically talks about how Elon Musk is his ideal person for talking about the example of reasoning from first principles. So you guys all know Elon Musk. Elon Musk created SpaceX and his idea from SpaceX is first of all, he wanted to create rockets that can go in space. We can eventually go to Mars and, and colonize space. But he knew that the first part was getting a rocket into space, like actually launching a rocket into space on his own. So he had initially went to Russia. He was trying to buy some of their old, I think it was missiles or ICBMs uh, so inter intercontinental ballistic missiles so that they could use them to launch up into space and they were something like some extreme amount like 60 million or 100 million or something like that dollars and so after going and trying to buy these uh, ICBMs in Russia he realized that it's just gonna be way too expensive and that they had to figure out some other way around it so what they did is they is he reasoned from first principles and he said okay if you break down an ICBM or a rocket uh, into its requisite parts, into its requisite, even atoms, right? So you take down and you break down everything. What is it like titanium and carbon fiber and all these different pieces that it would be and you laid it all out in a big carpet or something. How much would that actually cost? And when you reason from that first principles, he realized that the cost for the actual ICBM and the rocket was a fraction of the actual price that you'd have to buy it for. And so he realized that, look, we could actually build this ourselves for a lot cheaper than the large companies that are building it now, and we could actually make a, a nice profit. And that's what ended up happening. So for, you know, you have this entrenched rocket building industry, there's lots of large companies out there who do it, and they had basically never really examined whether they can make it cheaper because of all the, the costs that had accumulated, right? Like I'm sure they get outside contractors to build certain parts and just the, there's so much blow into it. When somebody can come in from the outside, reason for first principles and see that, look, if we just look at all the separate parts, we can make this a lot cheaper. And that was their strategy moving forward. That was their theory. And that's what they built it upon. So reasoning from first principles looks at the landscape, looks at the problem and says, okay, let's break this down into the smallest parts possible and question each of our assumptions. So with becoming a software developer, this is how I look at it, okay? So I start with say like, is there a law against people becoming software developers without a CS degree? Okay, there's not clearly, right? Like, so that's a really good start. Like I'm like, okay, as long as there's no, there's no law, there's no central body that makes sure that every software developer has a certain level, okay, that's a good start. Other fields aren't this way to become a lawyer, in my state of Illinois, I think every state, you have to pass the bar and you have to be licensed by that state to be a doctor. You have to have, there's certain credentials. I don't know exactly what they are, but there's certain credentials. You have to go to school for a certain amount of time and that sort of thing. And that's very highly dependent on having a degree. So software development is not like that. And so I, I just look at it, that's my first starting point. And then the other starting point I have is, are there people who have done this before who have not had a CS degree? Other people who I know who have recently done it, like I mean personally known, and the answer is yes, people who I've mentored have gone this route 
and gotten a job. And they didn't get a job with some rinky dink company, right? It wasn't some like bad experience. Like the, my most recent person got, he got hired for a big insurance company. So things like that are not, not uncommon at all. And in fact, I get plenty of people reaching out to me all the time who are telling me about self-taught stories. So that's another sort of just, you know, okay, is it still happening? Yes, it is. The, the thing I try to reason all the time is like, look, if I'm a company, right? If I'm a, even if I'm a big company or even a small company, is there any reason why I wouldn't hire someone without a degree? All things being equal. Like if somebody went to college versus not going to college, is there any reason why I would wanna hire the person who went to college? If one person or there's two candidates equal, one went to college, one didn't, is there any reason why I would go with the CS candidate? And honestly, I can't think of a good reason. I personally can't. Like this is me, this is my explanation of it. Other people may have good reasoning. Maybe they want somebody who can follow a structure and they believe that people who go to school can follow a structure. But as far as I see things, it's very, very hard. Like at the end of the day, companies want are, are right now, what I've seen from what I've heard from people who are in, in the industry, who I know as well, that there's enough demand for good talent that if you can show in the interview process through your previous work that you know what you're doing or you have potential or your personality is, is good in that sense as well, that they're gonna hire you because you are going to provide them as a company value. And that's it at the end of the day. That CS degree doesn't inherently provide them value, then there's no compelling reason for them to hire you. So my big takeaway from this is just, look, reason from first principles. Don't go off of even what I say. Like seriously, don't go off what I say. Another YouTuber says, some really smart person, Bill Gates. Reason from your own first principles. Like always examine it critically. And if you come to the same conclusion, awesome. If you come to a different conclusion, great. But at least you went to the source. You broke things down in their smallest piece and you questioned all of your underlying basic assumptions. Now the second thing I think that really is promising is sort of tags along with what I just said here is anecdotal evidence. So anecdotal meaning stories from other people, right? And I love to research this. I go on Reddit. I have people reach out to me on social media, even my own experience, my friend's experience, uh, people at companies. I'm always trying to gather evidence and information from all different types of sources. And just see, like, are people still able to get a job without a CS degree going the self-taught route? And the answer seems to be a pretty compelling yes as of right now. Like when I reach out to friends, I'm like, are they, are you guys hiring self-taught developers? Are there any people who you've seen, any people you've come across who are good candidates? Maybe if you didn't hire them, but that were still good, did, but were self-taught. The answer is yes, right? Like if you go on the free code camp forums, if you go to my Facebook group as well, you'll still have people reporting that they're getting jobs without computer science degrees. And I know it's the internet and people could lie. Like, yeah, of course people could lie on the internet and people, you can't believe everything you read on the internet, right? But what I'm saying is again, there's where there's smoke, there's fire. And I'm hearing, or I'm seeing a lot of smoke. So there's gotta be some fire, even if some people are, are lying, which again, like I'm not really seeing a compelling reason to do that. But again, like let's just assume that even half the people are lying or half the people are, are exaggerating or something like that. Even more compelling than that is my work with, with people right now, what I'm seeing with people who I'm mentoring is that, again, a lot of people don't have computer science degrees. They're going out and they're, even if they're not necessarily getting a job at this point, they're getting interviews. They're getting taken seriously without a CS degree. And that's a really good first step. So if you're getting opportunities, that's a good sign that at least you can figure out the next part of the process where you have to pass that interview. So again, Anecdotal, anecdotal stories are important. So making sure that you're seeing that like there's people still reporting this, um, whether that's people writing blog posts about it on Medium, you know, free code camp forums, which is a great way to just find uh, motivation and information about that, or my Facebook group, or just like even just trying to find meetups where you can go and, and talk to people and see if this is still happening. So anecdotal stories are a good sign that this is still possible. Now, the last thing here is that I think that what's really promising is that you know, people tend to think that Silicon Valley is the only place you can become a software developer for some weird reason, right? Or like, that's like the, the main place. Every other place is very, very hard. And look, 90% of jobs, of software developer jobs, are located outside of Silicon Valley in the United States, okay? So that's still, 10% is really, really high. That's actually pretty crazy to think about that. 10% are located in one place, but still 90% of the rest are located outside of Silicon Valley. And there's opportunities everywhere. I live in Chicago right now. Yeah, there's a big tech community here. Same with other places like Denver. New York has a good tech community as well. But even beyond that, even if you're in a place like Tennessee, there's still 
places that have tech communities there where you can find a job as a self-taught developer. And so a lot of people get down on this idea that you only can be in Silicon Valley, that you only can work for the big tech companies, that you have to be you know, an ace at whiteboarding and data structure and algorithm problems, and that's the only way, and the only way to do that is be the student and go to college and blah, 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 blah. Okay, look, 90% of jobs are outside of Silicon Valley. You know, even beyond that, not every job is going to be at a big company like a Google or something similar. Many people who have reached out to me have said they get hired at a smaller company where they're like one of two or three developers, right? So there's, and a lot of people also will say they started with freelancing or they got some sort of freelancing gigs to start off with and they turned it into something that was more sustaining. So when I hear this concept that like, you know, it's like you only have to work for big tech companies like, or you have to be in Silicon Valley or whatever weird excuse it is, or it's like, it doesn't, it, it just doesn't make hold up when you actually start to look at some of the evidence out there. So computer science degree, working for the big tech companies, being in Silicon Valley, all those things to me don't necessarily apply. Like you can absolutely get a job in this but it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be easy going. Like a lot of people think that they're just going to pick up a couple of Udemy courses, they're going to read a few books, maybe maybe build a few projects and that's it. This is an intensive thing. If you're gonna make this a career change, you really have to go all in. And I've had a video that I'll post up here about going all in. I mean, this is not something to take lightly. This is like revamping your entire life, changing your career, it's not something that you should take lightly and think that you're just gonna get a few tidbits of information and change it. It requires you to go all in. So that's really it guys. I hope this video helps. I really hope it demystified some of the computer science degree myths that I've heard out there and just gives you a platform or really a strategy for thinking about this. So if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you totally agreed with what I'm saying or you totally disagree, go ahead and leave a comment, it's all good. By the way guys, if you are that person who is doing everything you can to get in this field, so if you are taking this seriously, you're putting all of your time and effort into this and you are looking for guidance, if you're looking for a roadmap about how to get to that first job, I have a mentorship program where you can work with me one-on-one -on -one to help achieve your goals. So I would cover everything from that roadmap about how to get where you wanna go, strategies for landing that first job, and we would do it together. Now, if you are interested in that, I would highly recommend booking a free career strategy session with me. And what we're gonna do on that call is I'm going to ask you a lot of questions about what you're currently doing. I wanna know what you're struggling with. I also wanna talk about what your goals are, what you're trying to do. And what we can do is by that, we can figure out Basically, if you're a good fit for the mentorship program. If you're a good fit, I'll lay out exactly what your program will look like and we can go from there. So I highly recommend booking that call. I will leave a link in the description below here and uh, hopefully I'll, I'll talk to you then. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, take care, peace out.